so you want to be a professional photographer. Hey, what's up you guys? For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Nick. I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for the last three years, though I've had a camera in my hand for the last 16. And for those of you who are back, thank you guys again so much for checking out another video. So today I want to discuss turning your hobby into a profession. As I said in the very beginning, I've been shooting professionally for three years, but I've had a camera in my hand the last 16, which means for th for 13 years of me shooting photography, I was actually doing it as a hobbyist. And I'm kind of still in the transition period between hobbyist and career because I don't make enough as a photographer to make that my full-time career yet, so I do have a job. So I'm kind of in this weird transition period. I think the transition period from a lot of the other photographers I've talked to who do shoot full-time is one of the hardest positions to be in. Um, I'm getting to a point now where I've built a decent-sized clientele base and I have some good word of mouth where I'm getting hit up for shoots a lot more often than I used to. So here's five tips to make your transition from a hobbyist to a professional easier. So number five, you have to sell yourself. One of the hardest things I've run into, and we discussed this in my very, very first YouTube video, so please forgive the quality, and I'll link that right there, is my confidence. I had a lot of confidence issues in selling myself as a photographer, as well as directing models and clients in the studio. One of the important things about being a professional photographer is the ability to sell yourself you are selling yourself as the product. Your skills and abilities as a professional are kind of the product you're pushing. Um, part of that is building a fantastic portfolio. Now, we discussed building a portfolio in our Trade for Prints video, which I will link right there. We talked about how to build that early portfolio without spending any money hiring models, as well as working with family members and friends in order to build that portfolio. Now, the other part of that is getting the portfolio out in front of people. Um, social media is a fantastic tool for that. Uh, currently, I use Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook in order to share my photos and to gain more clientele. To be honest with you, I have the most luck on Facebook. Instagram has also been successful for me. I haven't had a lot of luck with Twitter, but Instagram and Facebook have been great, especially Instagram because it lets you throw up your portfolio and that's all it is, is photos. There's no stories or anything like that. It's just your photos that you're posting. You get to use the tags and the location tags in order to bring clientele that are near you to you. Another part of that is always carrying business cards. I always carry business cards with me. I always have them in my wallet or in a card case or in a card carrier or anything along those lines. And I'm always willing to pass them out if I hear someone say, you know, I'm looking for someone to do senior photos. I'm looking for someone to do engagement photos, couple photos, or family photos as we enter summer. So number five is definitely the importance of selling yourself. So number four, your equipment. Generally speaking, when you discuss professional photography, most people think portraits, engagement photos, family photos, weddings, newborn photos, things along those lines. The four most important pieces to me and that I have found the handiest in my line of work of shooting portraiture has been three prime lenses, which is my 55 millimeter 1.8, my 85 millimeter 1.8, and my 35 millimeter 1.8 prime lenses. All of those lenses are reasonably priced lenses because they are prime, so they don't telephoto in and out. You can't zoom in on anything. You have to physically move yourself forward or back in order to zoom in and out. Um, but those are the three best portrait lenses in my opinion, and those are the three that, I, that I've had the most success with shooting portraiture and engagement photos, couple photos, things along those lines. And the fourth piece of equipment that is most important is a camera. And it doesn't matter what camera you get as long as it's comfortable for you and it's within your budget. I am all about budget photography as you're getting into shooting professionally. Um, a lot of sites and a lot of places will tell you, oh, you need a full frame camera to shoot professionally. I shoot with a crop frame just because that was in my budget at the time. I am saving up for a full frame so I, so I can expand my capabilities behind the camera, but for the time being, a crop frame camera has worked perfectly for me. So it doesn't matter if it's mirrorless or a DSLR, it doesn't matter if it's Nikon, Canon, Olympus, or Sony. All that matters is that you have a camera and those three prime lenses to, to really get started in portrait photography. If you're looking to do real estate photography, you really want to look into getting a wide-angle lens. 
such as the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter, which we discussed in this video right here. So number four is your equipment. Number three, editing software. I didn't think I would need editing software. I thought I could do everything in the camera and boy was I wrong. Good editing quality really can make or break a photo. Personally, I use Lightroom and Photoshop with the Adobe Photo Package, which is a monthly subscription. I believe it is $9.99, at least that's what I'm paying when I got into the plan but a good editing software is extremely important. There are a lot of them on the market and a lot of them are really good. And all of them have plenty of YouTube tutorial videos for you to learn and get better at it. Um, another thing I really like with my editing software is I do purchase some Lightroom presets every now and then, especially if there's a, a really, really cool look that I wanna capture or kind of utilize in whatever kind of certain photography I am doing, whether it's something conceptual or something for a magazine such as Rogue's Magazine, which I actually just got a studio partnership with, so make sure you guys go check them out. I will link their link down in the bottom. So number three is editing software. Number two is lighting. Lighting is such an important part of photography because you are literally just capturing light with your sensor or with your film or, or whatever it is you are taking photos with. Right now we are using a Niwa ring light and I will link that down below in order to light me. It produces a really good soft LED light. I really do enjoy it. In the studio we have a, we have a number of lights. Most of our shoots are done with a single light. So this photo here, this photo here, and this photo here, we're all achieved using a single light with a very, very large beauty dish. So you don't need to go out and buy the most expensive, fanciest lights possible in order to take good photos, but lighting is extremely important. On the flip side of that, if it's not in your budget to purchase lighting, make sure if you're using natural light, if you're shooting indoors through a window, try to put like a really, th a really thin white curtain over your window or wherever your natural light source is. It really helps soften the light and, the and it makes the image more beautiful and softer. And here's an example. That was shot with natural light. Um, if you're shooting outside on location, try to aim for a day where it's cloudy or overcast. You get a softer light that way. If you're shooting in direct sunlight and it's a really, really bright day, make sure you bring a reflector so if you put the model or the person in shade or you put the sun behind them, you can actually use a white fold-up reflector to light up their face and eyes because lighting up the eyes is extremely important to capturing a really, really good photo. There are also a number of speed lights, speed light attachments, and mobile lighting solutions. Some of them are really expensive, some of them are really, really cheap. We will review some of the ones that I have and that I've used in the past that I've liked and that I've disliked. So there are a lot of ways to light your model or light your client or light your subject. All of them are important based on what you can use, what you can get your hands on, or whatever your budget calls for. So number two is lighting. So number one, and this is the number one that I use on almost all of these lists, go out and shoot. I cannot, I cannot, and we discussed this in my five tips for a beginner photographer, which I will link right there. I cannot stress enough how important it is to go out and shoot. You cannot build a portfolio, you cannot network, you cannot sell yourself if you do not have experience behind the camera. Um, go out and take photos of family, go out and take photos of friends, go out and find some models that wanna do trade for prints, go out and take photos. Learning your camera, learn your lenses, learn your lighting, and take photos. The more you grow and the better you get as a photographer, the easier it'll become to sell yourself. Your confidence will grow, your portfolio will get better, and people will start to seek you out. And, and selling yourself with that boost of confidence is so much easier when you have the experience and the comfort behind the camera you're using and behind the lenses and lighting setups that you have at your disposal. So it doesn't matter if you're using a budget lens, a budget camera, or budget lighting. If you have experience behind those things, and we discussed this in my budget photography video that I will link right there. If you have experience with those things and you have the confidence behind them, it doesn't matter what you spent on them if you have the time behind the camera. So those are my five tips for someone looking to go through the transition period of turning their hobby into a career. So thank you guys again so much for joining me. You guys have a wonderful night. Make sure you check out my links down below. All my social media is down there. I have a link to Rogue's Magazine, as well as all the equipment that I use and all the equipment we discussed in this video. You guys have a wonderful night and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.